Hi there, my name is Memo and this is my channel Houseplanty Goodness and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion which you might be able to see around me, it's tropical houseplants. So today I'm going to do a video that's been much requested and I know it's taken me a while to get here but this is the continuation of the plant room tour or plant shelf number three we're up to now and I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight eight plant shelves in total so I'm not doing so well that we're still only on number three. Hopefully I'll be able to make more of these for you as the time goes on but these videos don't take an awful lot of time to film but they do take an awful lot of time to edit which is why I don't readily do these all the time because it's just there's only so many things I can do in a week whilst also working. <laughs> but anyway let's move on to the actual shelf tour shall we? And I'll see how I'm going to film this because some of it I might be able to pick up off the shelf, some plants I cannot pick up off the shelf so I might have to bring you in so apologies for slightly shaky camera, I've got nobody else here to hold the camera for me so <laughs> but let's start off and let's actually talk about some of the plants that are not on the shelf but they're on a beam up above the actual shelf itself and one of these things is the Hoya linearis that you might be able to see here. It is also in bloom and I'll try to bring that in a bit closer and hopefully if I move it over my face yes it will focus but it does have quite a few blooms on at the moment. It seems to be happy but and I'm sure the people that have been here for a while will know Haha, struggle with mealybugs in this conservatory is real. I'm always treating for mealybugs so if you do see any white fluffy bits I'm aware and they're probably going to get sprayed after this video because again any opportunity like this when you pick up your plants either to water or to do anything with them if you spot any pests treat them as soon as you see them don't come back don't say I'm going to come back to it in a few hours time you never will so do it then and there but so the Hoya linearis it's since moved in from the outside it's in pond now it seems to be a lot happier so that's good it took a beat and you can see some of the yellowing potentially on the leaves that is because, and I'll bring it in a bit closer so you might be able to see this one a bit better, but you might be able to see some of the yellowing on some of the leaves. It's mainly on the older leaves and that was during the transitional period. So that's one thing to kind of bear in mind, but this is one that has holidayed outside twice, two years in a row now. So I've had this three going on four years and it's taken a beating it's got chopped back and propagated a few times, it's also not as long as it probably could be but the interesting thing is when you get the Hoya linearis outside in the summer as long as it's in a sheltered shaded position out there because normally if you've got it indoors I'd always say bright bright lights but as long as you've got it outside and it's kind of I usually pop it underneath a tree so it gets the shade from the tree it's interesting because it doesn't grow longer because the, the space between the nodes, the, the internodal space essentially, between the, the, the leaf couplings basically, isn't as long because it's not stretching as much as it might do indoors because obviously even indoors with bright overhead light like it would get into this conservatory, it's still not as bright as it would be under the shade of a tree outside. So it's shorter internodal space and you get a much bushier look and feel to the plant which is really cool. Let's move on to the next one. The other thing that I've got on here <laughs> and the people that have been around for a while, I don't just do janky support sticks, I also do janky wires for hanging. So this is a self-made little planter for the monkey pictures and why am I blocking on, oh Nepenthes, oh, there we go that's it, Nepenthes for this one and it's still keeping some of its pictures. I don't know if it's a winter thing because it's the first time I'm having it over the winter because I got it just before autumn and it's growing the leaves with the pinches but they're not developing and I know that this is sometimes a bit of an issue until you get the care of it right so I don't know if it's a care issue or if it's a winter issue because it's obviously a bit cooler in here even in here at night. The humidity is quite high, I'm watering this quite frequently, it is in um, in a net pot and it is in sphagnum moss so and I am obviously watering it with this is with reverse osmosis water there's only a few things in my collection that are still getting reverse osmosis water but 
yeah, seems happy enough as it is. I mean, it's growing, it's growing new leaves all the time. The pictures aren't developing, but as I said, it might be a winter thing. If you know and you're quite good at growing the penthes, let me know down below. <laughs> I would love to find out. But let me put this back. And let's look at another plant. So let me pick up another one that's here. I'll do the ones that I can pick up quite easily first. And uh, with previous videos, part of the reason why it takes forever to edit is because I'll try to edit out all the bits of me trying to get the plants in to save myself a bit of time and to potentially motivate me to do a few more of these. You might just have to bear with looking at my back for a split second or two whilst I get the plants. Apologies. <laughs> but this is the Discidia oyantha, oynantha. Not entirely sure how to pronounce that one which is also variegated. And you might be able to see there are also certain vines that are fully white. And normally a lot of people say take these off because it will sap the energy from the plant and potentially could kill it. But there's so much foliage, even variegated foliage, on this plant that it doesn't seem to harm it. Annoyingly, it is in a core kind of bundle. And I think one of my followers on Instagram made a really great and astute comment about this. These are the collars of death and I would agree a lot of the plants that have had these that I didn't take off and you can stress them and a lot of the time it's annoying because they usually will put these on to Discidias and also Hoyas and the problem is the moment that you start trying to get them off this and it's probably an easy way for the nurseries to grow these plants on the moment that you try to take these things off them is the moment that you destroy some of those very fine roots that take a very long time to grow so <laughs> Not my favorite thing. I've removed it from most of my other plants. With this one, because it's grown in the soil and you can see I've got it in terracotta, I don't want to risk taking that off and killing what is now essentially quite a long plant. When I first got it, it was probably only a few vines and it was probably only about to here. And you can see I do need to take off some of the crispy bits, but benefit of being in conservatory. My floor is a mess of like dead leaves. And once every couple of days, I'll go through with a broom and just essentially sweep it all up. But yeah, very, very cool Discidia. I do want to get a bit more into Discidias, but at this point in time, I don't have an awful lot of space, so I don't know if I will. I do want to get the Discidia that tends to be more like a suction cup that will grow up against a plank. I would love to grow them. I can't remember the name of that one at the moment. It's eluding me. But if you know which one it is, drop it in the comments down below. That is one that I have been looking for for a while. I know they're available, but they don't come up as often as maybe other things do. But yeah, the Discidia oinantha variegata. Very, very, very cool plant. So let me put this back on the shelf. The next thing that I'm going to pick up is my Pothos Enjoy, which sits on there. And for the eagle-eyed amongst you, this was one that was trailing for a while and I found that it was drying out too quickly in the soil, so I decided to move this into pond. Really didn't like it, really didn't like it. I think I might have put, did I? Maybe it stayed wet for too long and I think it's lost most of its roots. So yes, it does look like a pot, but essentially it's a pot of water. So these are all propagations, but for people who don't know, they wouldn't know that this isn't a pot of fully growing pothos enjoy. So top tip. If you've got a pot like this that doesn't have a drainage hole, usually a decorative pot, please, please, please do not grow any plants without drainage holes. Duh. Too many issues. But for something like this, if you fill it up with water and you stick in loads of propagations like this to water propagate from afar, it looks like a plant. So yeah, that's, I'm sure you could have figured that on your own, but very cool nonetheless. Right. Let's look at a propagation now, and I'm gonna to try to not get water everywhere because this is sitting in self-watering. This is a propagation of the Epipremnum amplicium. So Epipremnums being related to the golden pothos. But this doesn't look like any Epipremnum that you can see with the kind of very lance-shaped leaves. My one is the fully green version. I think there is one that has silver, silveriness to the leaves as well. I don't have that. I, would love to find that one, but yeah, I, uh, again, no space. <laughs> but this one is a really interesting one because unlike a lot of other epipremnums that definitely like to dry out before you water them, 
These, from what I could see from my research, tend to be growing closer to bogs, so they do prefer a bit more moisture. And the mother plant, which is on another shelf, which is in my aroid soil mix, that one does, I don't ever really ever let it fully dry out. I do let it go on the drier end of moist and then rewater it and it does really well. With this plant, this is one of the plants that will quite quickly throw out runners without any leaves on them. And I found the more I let it dry out fully, like I would with other epipremnums, the more it did that. And the more I kind of manage the watering a bit more in the way that I've just mentioned, the less runners I get, or no runners for that matter. I thought it might also be something to do with maybe it was running out of moss pole because that's what was happening to the mother plant. But hello, this is growing on more janky support sticks <laughs> and it's doing fine. But again, this also comes back to something that I've mentioned on previous videos, humidity, all of these things, and then also something to support itself to grow up. A lot of the times you can kind of negate some of those niggles and some of those issues by just getting the watering perfect. And the only way that I found with most aroids to get the watering perfect, as long as they don't throw a hissy fit, and as long as you do a transitional period of letting them dry out and treating pond-like soil for the first few months, and then moving it into self-watering. Self-watering with pond, I find, tends to be the perfect balance because the plant will pull out whatever moisture it needs so it doesn't have to fight against that constant drying and wetting cycle. It can just get on and grow more foliage. But yeah, I'll put this back and I'll pick up is there anything else I can pick up? Yes, some peperomias from some of the few remaining peperomia, peperomias in my care. So this is one that is a bit straggly, you can kind of see, and this does bush up. It's really interesting. This one always, by the end of the winter, looks like it's just on the brink of death. And I've had this for three years now, and it always becomes a very bushy plant again by the end of the summer. So I kind of let it do its thing, really. But terracotta pot in my aroid soil mix, it's looking a bit sad and pathetic, but this essentially is the Peperomia Napoli Nights, if I'm not mistaken. Very cool Peperomia, one of the few that's still in my care. Is it because I really like this Peperomia? Not particularly. I mean, it's got a nice, cool kind of silvery blue leaves. I try Peperomias. I, I've always been a big fan for many years now of Nick Pelleggi on... YouTube, and I've probably butchered his name there, but he's really into peperomia, so I really wanted to give them a try and see what the fuss was about. Mm, they weren't for me. I find peperomias, for the care that I want to give my plants, are way too fussy and die off way too quickly. But they might be good or better for people that practice a bit more benign neglect and let the plants dry out for a longer period of times and then water them through. Maybe that's what I'm doing. I tend to overwater. <laughs> that's why I've moved a lot of things into choose a pond because it's really difficult to overwater when it's already in semi-hydro. <laughs> but yeah, let me put this down and I'll show you another peperomia that is in semi-hydro. And this one's doing interestingly. I've got a a couple of peperomias now in semi-hydro, and they do okay. No, this is really not doing well. This is a peperomia caparata, and you can see all the issues on this one. Again, this is one that could come back in the summer. It's dripping all over the floor. I'm going to need to mop. But yeah, I think with a lot of my peperomias at this point, it's a kind of do or die situation. If they start throwing this much of a hissy fit, I've got enough other plants to be keeping me busy. These might either get gifted or if they're entirely dead, they might just be composted. So I think I've, you can kind of understand that I've probably had enough peperomies at the moment. It's just not a plant that works for me. And this is what I always encourage people. Just because everybody's into philodendrons or everybody's into anthuriums or everybody's into alocasias, if it's a plant that you struggle to keep happy and it causes you nothing other than stress and grief, maybe don't grow that type of plant. If you do better with other plants, lean into your strengths. Keep a couple of these if you want to do the challenge and you want to see if you can kind of get them happy. But at the same time, don't kind of stress out about it too much. Move on to something else. Maybe that plant isn't meant for you. Maybe that plant is meant for other people and you can grow things like maybe a hibiscus to like a tree size and it's amazing. And other people can't do that. Like, so, 
just be kind to yourself and know when it's time to give up as well. So let me put this back. And I'm trying to think of other things that I can pick up rather than kind of bringing you in closer. Right, I can pick up another one. This is a propagation of an Epipremnum pinnatum, and it's doing relatively well. It went straight into soil. An Epipremnum pinnatum is an Epipremnum pinnatum. This is one or two cuttings without the fenestrations and the people that have been here a while. And there's another video on my channel where I talk about taking cuttings from a fenestrated pinnatum. So that one's quite cool. This one's growing slowly, but the pinnatum in the beginnings does tend to grow a bit slowly. So yeah, I don't think I've got a lot more to say about this one, but yeah, propagation. All right, and I'll bring up another plant that I can actually lift up. And again, a surviving Peperomia, but this one might actually make the cut. This is the Peperomia pixie lime, and it's got very fuzzy uh, backs of the leaves. It's a nice kind of chartreuse color. It also sits on the very bottom of the shelf and doesn't get an awful lot of sun, but it seems happy. So I need something on some of those lower shelves that don't get an awful lot of sun. That can remain happy and this is one of them and it's doing okay this is one again it's one of the peperomias maybe this is why this one has survived as well as it has with me i found this peperomia out of all peperomias is thirstier so this one definitely isn't one that likes to go fully dry so <laughs> this is why it's probably as happy as it is because i like water love a lot of my plants so <laughs> but yeah peperomia Pixie lime. We put this down and see if there's maybe there's a few things at the top there that I can pick up. Yes, there is something that I can pick up. So this is the medium medium blue or silver. And again, in a previous video, you can see that I was talking about growing things up planks. And this is a newest leaf, and they come in this lighter green color, and then they fade down to this kind of bluey, silvery color that you can see there. Interesting story about this one. When I first got it, it was this leaf and another leaf, and that was it. I think it was just the two. And the other leaf seemed, for the first time ever that I've seen this on a plant, because interestingly enough with how much I water my plants, I've not really ever had a lot of bacterial issues that I can see on the leaves. That one seemed like it had a bacterial issue, but I didn't want to get rid of it entirely. So I tried to make sure it wasn't touching anything else. It wasn't going to infect anything else. I was paying attention to the other leaf, but I didn't want to get rid of it just yet. The moment that I had a new leaf that was a strong leaf, I got rid of that one because I just didn't want to risk it. But interestingly, and I'll bring it in so you can see that a bit closer, note how well it's growing on the plank. And I can also, and I really hope I don't jinx myself with this one, a lot of the medium mediums, the issue that most people find with them is they will throw runners out really, really quickly. So there's a lot of mediums out there because the people are selling the running nodes essentially just the node on its own since putting it on a plank which is why i thought i would put this on a plank it hasn't done that and everybody that i keep seeing with a medium mediums throwing runners all the time nobody's got them on a plank even on a moss pole it dries out a bit too quickly this is fully attached now so I treat this more like what I would do a shingler and it does really well and you can see it's in pond this hasn't gone into self-watering just yet but this gets watered quite frequently I think every four or five days it never really fully goes dry and it seems to like it I think I remember reading somewhere that it it does like to not go fully dry but it's interesting because this leaf is a lot thinner than some of the other leaves and I'm wondering if that's coming into a bit more of a mature form which might be a bit more palm-like. I've not found a lot of mature pictures of this plant. I might be wrong, I might just be making this up, but we shall wait and see. But I think it's very, very cool. Still, I really do, I am enjoying this plant. The one thing I will say is I've probably had it for probably coming up to six months now, and it had two leaves, and now, and I got rid of one of the leaves, so it would have had one, two, three, four, five, five leaves in six months. It's a bit of a slow grower. Just bear that in mind. It's probably been a bit longer than six months, actually. So yeah, bear that in mind. I think the medium medium is equally slow. The green 
version of this, and I think this is called the Spider-Man plant because of some of the venation that you might, I don't know if it's going to pick up, I don't think it will. Um, but the variegated version, apparently according to a lot of people, isn't one that is particularly slow. I don't personally like the variegated one because you don't get the fenestration, the leaf structure is a bit odd, and to me it looks a bit diseased every time I've seen it. So it probably isn't. But I personally don't like the look of it, but I'm not going to like every plant out there in the same way that you're probably not going to like every plant out there. But let me put this back and let's move on to the next plant. So the next one is a propagation. I've got quite a few propagations on this one. And you might be able to see ah, ah, all the feely bugs. So maybe it was only maybe one or two, basically. But yes, this is definitely going to be one that's going to get treated. This is propagations of the Syngonium albo. And I've got some green cuttings in here. I had some variegated cuttings in here. And I'm just seeing how it goes. It's in pond. It was getting watered as normal. Now I've got a self-watering system. I've got like a water reservoir at the bottom, so I'll see how that goes. But yeah, it seems to be doing quite well. Interestingly, it's got a lot more mealybugs now, but I think it might just be because it's close to something that has got a lot of mealybugs on it. So, yeah. so this I'm going to put down and I'm going to deal with after the video. Right, next propagation is the Philodendron Splendid, and this one is doing exceptionally well. Again in pond, this was a propagation that went straight into pond and it's only just got its own water reservoir. You can see some of the blushing on the back of the leaves, which you can see the parents of this plant, which is the varicosum. The melanochrysum is why you get the slightly longer leaves and the slightly velvety feel. And you can also see the melanochrysum parentage on this new leaf, which has got that golden hue. And you can see some of the pink blush peeping out through as well. So I think this is a very, very cool plant. I've done a separate video on this in terms of a review, so I'm not going to bore you on the details of this plant, but very, very cool. Nonetheless, let me pick up... Uh, can I pick up another one? No, I think at this point I'm going to pick you guys up and take you to the plants so you can see and we can talk about them. And apologies for really unflattering angles, but top shelves now. So if you look up, you might be able to see right there, I've got my trusty water meter to kind of point things out. That is a scissors discolor and there was two original propagates in here because guess what the mother plant threw a hissy fit and died but they've been growing in pond they do okay in pond but not great i mean the leaves are a bit washed out they're not as green as they could be i think i'm seeing some mealy bugs on there potentially no it's all right i think um okay. spotting the mealy bugs um, behind it, you might be able to see that I've got right there, you might be able to see that this is um, Florida Ghost. And behind that, which I think is where a lot of the needy bugs might be coming from, is a Philodendron Squamiferum. So I will probably be dealing with that relatively soon. And I'm trying to see what else. I might not be in the shots for some of these ones, but. The other one here, you can see this is my second Philodendron Gloriosum. And let me see if I can bring this in a bit more. And you might be able to see there is some of its leaves. One of them got busted up, but you can see I've not got it growing on anything past this point. Obviously, it's a crawler at that stage. But uh, yeah, you can see there's a new growth point. And it seems to be okay that the stem is chunky. Right, let's come into some of the lower shelves. And hopefully this is picking up because I can't really see. But this is the Begonia seismorii propagation, which is just ginormous. There is next to it just a standard, the pink flamingo, I think, Anthurium. This one is the only other plant that had got some powdery mildew on it, so I was dealing with it, but it seems to be doing okay at the moment. Next to that is my varicosa, and these are some of the plants that can't come out of these shelves relatively easily. So this is where they stay. But the varicosa is doing okay, and these are some propagates from a plant that was decimated by mealybugs. And I'll take you all the way down, and apologies for how filthy everything is. This is a bit of a propagation station. There's some LED grow lights at the top. 
There's a Philodendron Gygus, not Gygus, Glorious, that's at the back there, a baby one, that's growing on plank. There's some White Knight or White Wizard. Uh, it might be White, no, sorry, that is a White Princess. Apologies. And um, that's growing quite nicely. The propagates have been cut. And you can see what I've done there. I've cut the majority of those large, large leaves in order to be able to get as much propagation material as possible in terms of the green for it to grow. You've got some Monstera albos. The first time, ironically enough, in how long that I've been growing my albos that I've decided to cut them and propagate them. That's the newest leaf is doing quite well. Obviously, you can see they're in a bit of a self-watering situation. Apologies on how filthy the floors are. And right behind there, you might be able to see this bit here. That is... Um, a Dark Lord Philodendron. So that one is doing okay. It had a bit of a failed. Is that a failed? No, and it's doing well. It comes in a bit of a darker browny color and then it will kind of lighten up to a red. So let me bring you back up and let's do some closing comments. Okay, so hopefully that was okay for everybody. I know it was a bit of a quick and dirty one, but I want to go into a bit more detail on each one of the plants as we go around rather than just me doing a massive pan of everything. But that is the shelf that's usually sitting behind me when I'm filming. So you might recognize some of the plants when you look at future videos. But hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully it wasn't too frenetic of a video. I will find out in editing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, probably get the next one at some point soon. I'm not making any promises on dates just yet. But yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed. If you've got any questions or comments about anything that I've discussed today, do drop it in the comments down below. I'd love to have that conversation with you. And yeah, hopefully you have a great rest of your day. And yeah, hopefully I shall see you here soon. Thanks. Bye.